Yo, what is up? Welcome back to another episode and live stream here at Free Will Photos. Today, uh, we're going to be doing a composite class, so to speak, inside of On One Photo Raw. Now, this is, uh, if, if you're wondering like, hey, where did you come up with this, Chris? Uh, every week, I'm going to be launching a poll on the YouTube channel um, or on the page. You should see it in your feed. And all you have to do is tell me, hey, what do you want to see in the next live stream? I don't think it was worded very uh, good. This was the first iteration of that. Uh, I just said, hey, what do you want to see next on the channel um, with my intention for it to be for the live stream, right? My goal is to create classes, videos, uh, content that is beneficial to you and the things that you actually want to see. So, uh, you know, that that's the main thing there. Yo, what is up? Good morning and uh, good Saturday. Oh, from Dallas. Nice. In a little while, we're going to be uh, we're going to be going down that way in uh over Veterans Day weekend, we're going to be going down to Texas, visiting some family. So uh, there will not be a live stream that weekend. All right. Just being up front with that. No live stream that weekend. However, uh, we're going to go ahead and move into a few slides. All right. If you uh, know anything about me, I just want to make sure that I'm as clear as I possibly can be um, and, you know, make sure everyone knows what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my screen real quick and we will get going. All right. So there is my first slide. Let me make sure that I'm actually on my slides and there we go. All right. So I have to give a quick disclaimer. All right. Uh, the tools inside of on one photo raw are not developed for advanced manipulation of photos when it comes to building composites all right so all of those like fantasy composites that you may have seen uh, designers make out of photoshop or affinity photo and even gimp in some cases uh, on one is not designed for that all right on one is a uh, raw photo processor that gives us a lot of powerful and amazing tools but on one is not designed to do uh, some of that advanced compositing. OK, uh, now you're going to see, you know, when we get to the examples that it is very, very possible to get some some cool results uh, and you can get as creative as you want. Just know that when it comes to selecting a subject, it may be a little bit more challenging. So want to make sure that everyone is on the same sheet of music. I have to give that disclaimer. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and move on. All right. If there's any questions about anything that I go over, please drop it in the comment section. Uh, I am more than happy to answer any questions in relation to uh, this. All right. So uh, here's a fun one. Um, last night, my wife and I, we were talking and, you know, I share what I do here on the channel with her and she supports the channel. She watches all these things. Right. And she was like, uh, so what's your live stream on tomorrow? And I'm like, it's going to be on compositing. And she was like, wait, what's a composite? And then, you know, she said, don't tell me. And I was like, okay, what do you think it is? And so she guessed and, uh, I think that there are a lot of people, I bring that story up to say that I think there are a lot of people who are going to ask the question, what is compositing? So in, in very, very simple terms, and this is by no means uh, the official definition of compositing, right? Um, and if anyone here on the live stream has a different definition or something that works a little bit better, please drop it in the comment section. But very simply put, Compositing is the process of, a com of combining two images into one image, all right? And that should really say two or more images uh, because depending on the bandwidth of your computer, you could put 80 images. Like if you look at some of these Photoshop uh, files or Affinity Photo files, 
there are like hundreds of layers in some cases uh, even if you go the designer route and you're building vectors but we're not going to go deep into that because i want to stay on topic moral of the story it's taking multiple images smashing them together or blending them in a creative way hopefully uh, you could just stack them all on top of each other and I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but that, that is what compositing is. All right. So how do we composite? And I went with the three most basic ways. There are some other ways of compositing inside of on one. I don't think they exist, uh, to a capability that's worth sharing. All right. Um, but the first way is layers. All right. On one, which is one of the, uh, I don't know of too many other raw processors that give us layers. I got something in my eye, real life. Uh, you know, I don't know of too many other raw editing processors that gives us layers to work with multiple images in one, uh, file, but on one gives us that. And so, you're going to see that we use layers really, really heavily in, in today's class. Uh, the second one is blend modes. Now, blend modes, you know, I use I came from Lightroom and I would have loved to have blend modes in Lightroom. I don't know how that would have worked, though, because there's no layers. So when you're given an ability to take something from the top layer and blend it with the bottom layer, uh, what happens in between, those are how you use blend modes and it tells uh, the software what to do with the top layer in relationship to the bottom layer. Now, I have a video all about blend modes. Uh, I did that a little while ago. So if you're interested, just go ahead and check the uh, channel. Um, and then if you're watching this on the replay, I will make sure to have that link in the description box below and probably even pop it up as a card somewhere around uh, this this place as well. So that way you can just click on it and get familiar with blend modes and how that works. And then the last one uh, is cropping. Now, I, I wanted to say masking, right? But that's not entirely uh, like you'll see in the example that I have lined up. Um, it is more like a mask, but you could easily do this in a crop if you want it to. All right. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So those are the ways. And now it is time to get into on one photo raw and do some, uh, compositing. So give me a second here. And here we are inside of on one photo raw. Let me change my view. There we go. That way you can see me. Hey, here I am. All right. Uh, so all I did here, and we're not going to use all of these images. I was experimenting. Uh, this was a huge experiment right here. Um, compositing is all about having fun in, in my mind, right? Sometimes you're doing something for a very intentional purpose, but I like to mess around and create things that are odd and like, would I ever share this with anyone? I'm sharing it with you guys because I think it's, you know, it, if you caught my uh, podcast episode that went out last night, I was just talking about not every photographer gets a perfect photo every time and not every editor gets a perfect edit every time. So you go, you experiment with something and you might get what you expected to get. And in other times you <laughs> might not. And in fact, in my case, I don't get the thing that I always wanted or what I see in my head like more times than not. But that's OK. Don't be discouraged. Uh, let me check the comments. Uh, yeah, blend modes, they, they take a while to understand. They, they really do. But uh, let's get into our first example. So the first example that I want to. Uh oh. This is not my album. This is OK. Sorry, I wasn't on the album uh, that I had set up. It looks similar, but I needed my photos here from a trip that we took in Alaska in 2020 before things got crazy. All right. So uh, what you want to do and let me go to film strip so that way you can see what we're going to do here. Uh, 
we were on a road trip and we were driving down this this road <laughs> um and the sky was blown out but all of this i needed in in detail and then i wanted the sky in the background right so i had to shoot one shot overexposed and one shot underexposed or what you would consider to be the right exposure now you could easily turn this into an HDR image if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Now, if you do not have On One Photo Raw 2022, uh, this is the way that the what I'm about to show you is the way that you would do your sky swap AI with you being the AI. All right. Um, so here's the deal. Select your images. And whenever you're selecting your images, there's going to be one that has a uh, darker border around it. We're just going to call that the most selected image. All right. It's really called the base image, but whatever. Just know that that is your uh, what on one is going to use to create your base. This is very, very important because the next step that we're going to use is we're going to click on layers, which is in the... Uh, the top right hand panel here okay when you click on layers it's going to take the base image the one with the darker border and it's going to set that as your first image that gets imported and then every other image is going to get imported in the layer stack above it okay and so as you can see my second photo it showed up up here the 323 322 is my base and so 322 is my base. When compositing, it's important to know which image is your base image because of your canvas size. Now, you can always come into uh, file and then canvas size, and you can change your canvas if that's what you want to do. Um, but if you know what you want your base size of the canvas to look like, it's important to start by selecting the appropriate image to set your base from. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, if it did, just say that made sense in the comment section. I don't know. All right. So now that I have my two photos, you're going to see that I have a problem. They're not aligned. These photos, I'm turning off the top layer so that way you can see that they're not aligned. All right. And... That's a problem because if I want it to paint in the sky, which is what I want to do, uh, here's what would happen. I'd click there, click my masking bug, and I want the linear bottom, click there, and look, I get this weird, let me turn off, just come over here, uh, zoom in, I get this weird looking thing. Okay. Thanks, Jer. I appreciate it. Uh, you get this weird looking line thing, right? No bueno, not fun, not cool. Uh, we could do better. All right. So uh, what I can do, you know, I don't recommend you do this, but you could leave that as it is and do the next step, but I'm not going to do that. All right. What I'm going to do is hit reset, make my mask do what it does. Uh, which is go blank and now I am going to click on the topmost layer now if you have multiple layers if I had like two or three more layers up here you're gonna have to do this multiple times all right but I'm gonna click on the topmost layer and I'm gonna use my blend modes and this is a blend mode that you probably don't use too much uh, but this is a very good blend mode for aligning your images all right uh, you can click on difference and you get like this really weird looking thing and it, it's crazy uh, but what difference does is it's an extreme highlight of things that don't match pixel by pixel okay which works great when you happen to want to align a photo so what I'm gonna do is click the letter click i'm going to press the letter v this gives me my move tool and by using the arrow keys i can move that top exposure 
around however I want to as I'm, I'm just pressing the down key. Uh, I don't recommend using the mouse because depending on the latency of your computer, you may end up clicking and dragging. You're not going to get it uh, even even you're not going to get it good. All right. Terrible English. It won't line up the way that you want it to. And so I'm just using my arrow keys to move this all the way around. And eventually I'm going to get rid of this line, uh, which that seems to be about right. The only issue I have is over here on the left hand side. Now, unfortunately, we were driving when I took this photo. Uh, the shutter speed was 1 25th of a second. And, you know, I don't know how fast we were going, but we were driving when I took this photo. I had it in continuous because uh, I shot this as a three image bracket <clears throat> and I'm only showing you two of the images. Moral of the story, because I changed the position of the camera from the last photo, there is going to be this weird distortion. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time to or I'm not going to spend any time on correcting that distortion today. But just know if you were on a tripod, you stayed in one area, you didn't refocus the camera and you just snapped the shutter button, you would be good to go. All right. Uh, but unfortunately, we were driving. So this is not going to line up perfectly. But let's just say it's lined up. Now I am ready to put my sky over my image. All right. I'm going to go back to the blend modes. Make sure that you're on the, the topmost layer, right? And in fact, to make this simple, let me just go ahead and put this to normal. I'm going to call this sky layer. And we're going to call this base layer. If, if I could spell. Boom. All right, so clicking on the sky layer, I'm gonna go ahead and select my mask. I'm going to invert it. And then what I like to do, you can do this however you want, is I like to use the masking bug uh, whenever I'm doing a sky and I know that there's a pretty straight horizon. It just gets me the, the result that I'm looking for the fastest in most cases, all right? Now, as you can see, we have some weird stuff going on on the uh, edge line here. Again, that's because the photo was not perfectly taken at the same place. Uh, if you do, you won't have nearly as much issue as I did. Um, but there are ways of fixing it. I'm not going to go through all those ways uh, through here. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Fun fact, I had shingles the day that I took this photo. So I didn't know I had shingles. I just thought it was a, a rash. And uh, <laughs> I was not I was on steroids, not the kind that gets you muscles, the, the kind of hopefully get rid of something. And uh, later on, I found out that I had shingles. So there's a story behind this particular image. Mm -hmm. Uh which is, anyway, not important. All right, so what we're going to do is, because I had to move this image, you can see I have a weird um, weird line here, right? So I'm just going to hit crop, and I am going to crop my image. I like to keep things on the original ratio, and my recommendation, if you do this, crop from the area that you have the issue, all right. So right here, the this corner is where my issue uh, kind of converges, if you will. Um, yeah, nah, shingles was not fun. So I'm just going to pull that right inside of here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's whatever works for you. But now I have my image uh, with the new sky. Now I, I need to do some cleanup. So I'm going to hit the mask, get my brush out here and I'm going to hit shift X and what just happened? For some reason 
it didn't apply my crop. Okay. Now, let's get the mask. There we go. I don't know why I didn't apply the crop. Sometimes on one does weird stuff. And now I'm just going to take my mask, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and paint away where I don't want the darker exposure. All right. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I think you understand uh, in general what it is that we're doing in this sort of composite. All right. This is a photography version of a composite. Now, you could do this with whatever if I wanted water down the road, right? I could go get a photo of a river or a stream, whatever, uh, align it the best I can and bring it down the road. Now, the problem is there's not really good warping tools. Uh, there's in the transform section, which we're going to look at here a little bit later. There are some tools down here um, where you can change like aspect and, and stuff like that, but it doesn't work when something bends, all right? It's more for a flat wall or uh, something straight. But hopefully you guys get the point of what's going on here. Um, and, you know, you can, you can also use your uh, opacity, right? So if you're like, hey, I don't want to get that weird. Uh, like we know that we had an issue with the edge over here. By using my opacity, I can just make it look like maybe those were burned. Um, and you know what? I'll show you another trick. Because there is something else that you can do uh, to help with that. All right. So. Yes. Uh, when you are cropping. Um, that, that's one of the cool things about on one. So on one crops, your canvas, it doesn't crop the individual image. Um, when you click on an image and you go to crop, oops, sorry. And you go to crop, it's going to look at the entire canvas. Now, if you want to crop a particular image, the way that you would do that is you would click on the image, go to transform, and then you can crop the image here by adjusting the height and the width uh, and, you know, pulling this in or whatnot. Now, I don't want to do that, but uh, yeah, great question. Um, yes, the cropping affects the canvas. Doesn't matter what image you're on. Uh, when you click on an image and go to transform, you can crop the image by itself uh, by doing so, all right? And transform here, I'll get into the differences between the transforms uh, on a later example. All right, so I said I was gonna show you a trick to dealing with that issue. And fun fact, make sure that you are off of transform uh, when you're done using it because You'll end up moving stuff around in your image and then you'll be like, oh man, how did I get all messed up? And then, you know, you get a little frazzled and it's frustrating. I have moved stuff that I did not mean to move because I would, just didn't click off of it. So always take the time to make sure you are not on the transform tab uh, or tool um, when you're working. All right. So next thing we're going to do is hit the paint bucket. All right. Um, this is going to open up an option for us to add in a color or a solid fill layer, all right? This is really, really handy, uh, and I'll show you in a later example, but I'm just going to put a white fill layer in here, okay? We'll go ahead and drop that underneath this particular layer, uh, and then I'm going to take the mask and I'm going to uh, reset or invert. So that way it's not showing anything uh, for that particular area, all right? And then what I'm going to do is hit Shift X and I'm going to paint in that white, uh-oh. You probably wanna do this with a low flow and maybe even be zoomed in a little bit further. 
not going to lie. And maybe even a low opacity. But all I'm trying to do is get rid of some of this, uh, this burn look on top of the mountain. All right. Uh, so for this particular image, it, it's snow. So you can paint white over it. And it just gives like a, a different effect, like a contour effect. All right. Um, this is also a way that if you wanted to do digital makeup, uh, you could. Like if you're into portrait photography, if that's something you're interested in, uh, please let me know. And I could show you some some of the tricks that I use many, many years ago. I don't do it anymore, but you can do digital makeup and, you know, give people blush, lipstick, eyeliner, uh, you name it, you can do it in post. You can make a person look completely different uh, as if you were using regular makeup. You can do it digital. All right, so hopefully that made sense. This is one way of compositing, taking a sky and replacing it, primarily for those of you who are using older versions of On1 and you don't have the sky swap AI. All right, if you have the sky swap AI, I think that you'll probably want to use that, but if not, that's okay. It's your business, all right? So let's go on. I'm not going to save this one because I already did this and I don't need multiple copies of the same type of work. I'm going to get a sip of coffee while this takes us back. Okay. Let's go back to browse. So the next example that I have for us is when you want to use a blend mode to add in a layer. Okay. Blend mode to composite in with a layer. This is a practical way of using some overlays here. So actually, let me go to film strip. And you can get these uh, overlays all over the place, all right? Um, or if you have a digital processor, in fact, I'll even show you how to make some of these inside of On1 uh, because there's a lot of things that you can just create for yourself and then use them as assets in your images. So this one uh, is like some blue pixel, uh, like bokeh light thingies, right? What matters the most here is that this is on a pure black background, all right? The next type of composite that I'm going to show you is going to use a blend mode to get rid of that background and leave just the brighter elements so it can blend with your photo. All right. So that one's on. A, all of these are on black backgrounds. OK. So what we're going to do is we are going to click on the dirt biker because I want the dirt bike to be our primary background. And then I am going to. Uh, hold down my command key, probably control on a PC. And I'm going to click on this little orbital looking thing. Uh, yeah, I'll go with that one. That'll be all right. And we're going to hit layers again. All right. Now you, you don't have to bring all of your layers in at once. All right. Uh, you could very easily uh, bring in your layers by hitting this plus icon once you have loaded your images and then you can navigate to wherever you may have some photos that you, I don't know if there's any photo in there, but let's say that that was a photo. I want it. You can navigate to the photos that you want. All right. And then you can click on it and then click add as layer down here at the bottom. Uh, and so don't feel like you have to have all your images in one folder. Um, in my former design work, it just made sense to have all of my assets in one folder. So if it's like, hey, I need to go get that texture, I know where to go to grab it and I don't have to go navigating around for it. So I'm just bringing some of that workflow into here. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I am going to hide that layer for a second. I'm gonna do like a crazy bad mask to cut out this dirt biker because I don't want the dirt bike, uh, the dirt biker, if you will, um, by himself, right? Or I'm sorry, I need to get him on a separate layer. So, uh, and in fact, what I'm going to do is duplicate this. 
and then I am going to turn off the bottom layer because I want this layer to be my dirt biker. So I'm going to click on the mask. Then I'm going to go AI quick mask. And again, this is not going to be the greatest cutout. Uh, oh. I want to keep the dirt biker using the AI quick mask. Hopefully it does a good job. I did not test this one out. All right. Um, mostly because what I said earlier, sometimes you get what you expected to get and other times you don't. Now, this is where the challenges of on one selection tools come in uh, and, you know, kind of plays to what I was talking about, that on one is not designed for uh, advanced design work. If if I wanted to. I would probably need to take this into Affinity Photo to get a good cutout and then maybe bring it back in. But if I'm going to do something in Affinity Photo, uh, I might as well finish it in Affinity Photo. Or if, you get, if you're using Photoshop, I don't know. You let me know what your thoughts are. If you go to one program, what's the point in bringing it back uh, to a program that you had to leave because it didn't offer what you wanted to do. All right. Just food for thought, my personal opinion on that. But hopefully this is a good enough, uh, like that's enough information for on one to make a good selection. And whatever it makes is what we're going to go with because I just want to show you. Uh, yeah, I'll clean that up. So we're going to hit done. And then I'm going to hit the B key to go to my mask once this so terrible, terrible mask. Jer completely agrees with me on not having to go between, uh, oh, my opacity and flow is low. That's the one thing that, you know, you got to pay attention to if you're working in mass. Uh, make sure that you know what's going on. And you'll see why I want to get rid of all of this. You want to have a really good selection of whatever item you want this effect uh, to ultimately go behind. All right. And that's what we're doing. I just need to get the dirt biker uh, cut out. I don't know. Is dirt biker like the correct terminology? I hope it is. And again, I'm not going to try and make this absolutely perfect, but I do want you to get a good idea of the result. So that's the reason why I'm spending the time to get rid of some of these uh, more intrusive areas. Uh, so that way you can fully appreciate, hopefully, uh, this form of compositing, right? Because you may, you know, in, in a real world scenario, someone may say, hey, you know, I would really like uh, effect or a modified background and you're probably like, oh, I don't know Photoshop skills. I'm not going to be able to do that. Well, because, you know, many of us, we we run away from doing some of the more advanced graphic design work because we think it's overly complicated, uh, which is the purpose of today's lesson. Right. To show you it's not overly complicated. If you like once you know, you know. Right. Um, but it's getting to the point of knowing. So hopefully this evens the playing field in some situations. All right. We have a pretty decent cutout, not the greatest, but good enough for what we're going to do. And we'll go ahead and leave that be. We're going to move this right underneath. Let me close the mask. Close the mask and put it in between our images. All right. So now we have the uh, image of the dirt biker on the background of this pixel looking thing. This could be where you stop, right? If you had a good selection and you're like, yeah, look, I did it. You could absolutely stop right there and be okay. All right. But that's not what we're going to do today. What I'm going to do is turn on the background layer so that way we can see uh, the other dirt bikers. Now, remember, I did not move the position of the dirt biker. It's important that 
for this particular type of effect not to move the position of the subject that you cut out. Um, and if you do, only do it a little bit and I would say scale it from the center so it covers up whatever is behind it. Um, in Affinity Photo, I would actually remove on this layer, which right now we're looking at the bottom layer, I would remove the dirt biker altogether and this would just be clouds and whatever else is in the background. I would take the time to like clone stamp all of this away. Yes, there is a clone stamp in on one. I do not recommend you using it for like, unless you just want to spend hours or you don't have affinity photo. Uh, it is not it compared to some of the other tools. It is not as good. It can get the job done but it is not as good, all right? Enough said on that. So let's go ahead and turn all these back on. And all I'm gonna do is click on my uh, pixel layer here or my background layer, whatever we wanna call that. And I am going to use one of these modes, lighten or screen. Nope, that's not gonna work. Color dodge, that's not gonna work. And nope. So, it's not giving me the effect that I was hoping for. And that is okay. Let's see. Let's go with screen because it's there. It, the, the problem is everything else in the background is bright. So, we're going to go with screen. I'm going to click on tone and color and I'm going to bring the exposure up. Yeah. And then we'll work on some of the saturation. Let's see if we can get like the vibrance. We'll bring some of that blue back, right? And one of the cool things about on one is instead of having to go grab like a curves layer or anything crazy like that, you have access to the develop module. But on every single layer that you are building your composite on, you can also hit effects and then hit add filter. And I can add in like a color adjustment layer, right? And if I wanted to pump more blue into this particular layer, I can just hit the saturation and pull this to whichever direction that I want. And now it's there. All right. Uh, now you're probably like, but that doesn't look good. You're right. It doesn't look good yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is come to transform and we are going to scale this up a little bit. All right. Hit the little drop down arrow and drag this over the entire image and hit apply. And now what I want to do is just bring down the opacity. So, there's two opacities. The one that's underneath the develop effects and all these uh, bars, this is for your effect that is going on down here, all right? You're only gonna see this if you are on effects, all right? The one that you want to mess with is the opacity up here at the top. This is just going to lower the opacity in the image altogether. And this now gives like a pretty cool looking effect, right? So now I can click on my top layer and I can expose the dirt biker however I want. So if I want him to be a little bit brighter, so that way he pops out, maybe even contrast him a little bit more. So now you can see the, the power of being able to composite now this background, it didn't work out so well, so you can try different backgrounds, uh, but hopefully the the technique here makes sense, right? Um, and because I have the dirt bike cut out here now, I can use the mask and go throw all kinds of special effects. Uh, and, and, you know, if I want it to, I can put a shadow behind him. So I can click on the mask, hit copy. Once it copies, and then I can click on the paint bucket 
and I want to make a black layer this time. And you know, we'll actually make it a little bit like a, a dark gray. Hit OK. And then I'm going to click on my layer mask. And I'm going to paste it. And it's going to make a silhouette. Now, obviously, that's not exactly uh, what I want. And well, one, I don't want it on top of him, right? So what I'm going to do is drag it right underneath him. And then I'm going to go to transform. And I'm going to scale this up just a little bit. Not that much. Got to make incremental scales. And it doesn't want to let me do a little itsy bitsy scale. It just wants to make me uh, like this monster size of a scale. So this is where we're going to go ahead and make this 100. Yeah, it, you know, you can get as crazy as you want uh, with this, you know, artistic, artistically speaking. So what I'm going to do is just drag from the corner, right? And all I'm trying to do is bring this off of him a little bit. And it's okay if it's like a little weird right now, because my next step, like giving him kind of a tail there, right? So now again, I have effects. I can hit add filter. Oh, I'm on. I don't want to move that anymore. So now I'm on add filter. I'm going to add a blur and I'm going to add a lot of this Gaussian blur to my, uh, my gray layer here. And it doesn't want to impact it. Apparently let me turn this off for a second. And yeah, it just wants to give me all of that. Uh, yeah, just testing out some theories. Nonetheless, that is something you can do. Uh, you just have to play around to get the effect that you're looking for. But as you can see, it looks different. It's not the same photo uh, that we started with, which is this down here. That's what we started with. And, you know, through some editing, we got something that looked like that. And then we decided to throw that in. Take it or leave it. Uh, it does add some depth and dimension. Um, and, you know, you can even bring the opacity of this down, uh, which I guess doesn't look as good either because it's not blurred. Uh, if it were blurred, it would make much uh, more sense. But... For whatever reason, the blur just doesn't want to work here. Okay. Um, and I suppose, you know, you can always just come to the mask. Sorry, I, I can't let this kind of go. Can't let it die on me. Uh, I feel like I, I owe you guys a, a good illustration. So what I did here is I clicked on the mask. I'm on paint out. And all I'm going to do is make a fairly large sized brush and then come over to the edge on a very low opacity uh, with a 100% feather and just click a few times. And that helps to fade away some of those more jagged, harsh edges. Uh, and the bigger the brush, just the less impact it has over the photo uh, overall. And now that looks a little bit better. It could be better, but it's definitely better than it was. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our brows. We'll go ahead and hit done and hit OK on this. We'll let that let that save, you know. So hopefully you guys are finding some value in this uh, live stream so far or class, however you want to look at it. The next one we're going to do is actually uh, one that's fun for me. All right. Uh, 
this is where you can really get artistic in the way that you composite inside of on one um, and build something that could very easily just be a background it could be uh yeah the sky does look kind of cool um it can very easily be a background it could be of it, it can be a lot of stuff all right so case in point or uh, things to remember is whatever you want your base layer to be select that first all right now I'm just going to go ahead and hit edit because maybe I have this image and I'm like, okay, I just want to edit uh, this image. And then you're like, you know what? Maybe I do want to actually composite another image into this. All right. Now, this photo lends itself very well to the technique that I'm going to give you. Uh, but you're going to have to look at this from your own perspective of images that you want to apply this type of thing to all right uh, so I'm going to hit the plus icon and I am going to bring in this gray space looking thingamajig all right now there's a lot of different things that I can do uh, this is not on a perfectly black background uh, if I wanted to I can just hit lighten or screen which none of those look good I can even make it darker. None of that looks good. So I'm leaving it on normal. All right. Then I am going to hit transform and I am going to use the left arrow key to make this a portrait sized image, right? Or style of an image. And then I want to scale this up. All right. I want it to fill the entire canvas and that fills it quite well. In fact, it might be too much, so we'll come back. All right, that's good. Hit apply and then hit V just to get off the move tool, as I mentioned before. The next step is very simple when it comes to this composite, and this is in that cropping segment. We're going to hit the layer mask on top of this layer. We're going to get uh, our masking bug, hit the letter M, and one of the most underutilized tools uh, is the reflected gradient, all right? I think this is one of the most underutilized tools in on one photo. If you're not familiar with the reflected gradient, I'm gonna show you what it does. So I went ahead and I clicked it, and this is horizontal. You can make this, you know, you can turn it to make it uh, vertical, whatever. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is delete that one and I want it to be linear, flect it, click. All right. I just wanted it to be uh, vertical, right? And instantly you can see the effect that it has. But what's cool about the reflected gradient is all of what, anything between the solid lines is unaffected. And then it goes from uh, unaffected to a gradient of 100% of whatever the other image is. And then it does the same thing on the opposite side. Really, really powerful for symmetrical things. But say this isn't perfectly symmetrical and you want it to uh, maybe on this end over here, you're like, I only want a, a big chunk of this image blended in on this side but on this side i want it blended in far less i can drag this out all the way to the edges there and now i have an option to either have less of the image on this side or more of it on this side uh, but i could also drag this closer right can't break center but i can drag it closer and i can drag this even further in so the gradient happens a lot faster uh, so lots of wiggle room when it comes to using this now for this particular image i would actually spread this out probably to about there and then i would bring this back to about here right and 
I'm just looking for something that is somewhat symmetrical. Uh, so maybe even bring this up to there. And we'll just use the image, right? So I'll bring it to the corner there. and Or I'm sorry, the edge, not the corner. Bring it to the edge here. And there you have it. You have made a composite image of, you know, with just using a very simple click. This is a crop version, um, but there are a lot of different things that you could do with this, right? So if I didn't want to use that particular image and you're like, you know, I need to blend in a color. Well, we can go to RGB sliders. You can, we'll go to the color wheel, make it a little bit easier. Um, and we'll just put a, a yellow, right? So I'm going to get a yellow fill layer still on the reflected gradient. Click here. This doesn't make sense whatsoever. All right. It really doesn't. But we're just going to say, you know, maybe you need to do something like this. Uh, I could see this happening in advertising where it's like I want to take the color of a particular product and then surround it with that color, but leave the product in the center cut out. Now, once that's all said and done, you can hit the B key, you can have your brush, and then, you know, obviously we still have some opacity, uh, and hit Shift X, and I can just start painting in the mask wherever I may want it elsewhere, right? Uh, and just so much creativity available to you, uh, once you know what's available, right? 100% uh, up to you how you implement this in your work. Uh, but knowing that it is available is probably half the battle. All right. So we're going to go ahead and hit cancel on that because I don't. Oh, did it, did it cancel? Because I don't I don't need to save this one. Uh, that was a very simple image. All right. Now we're going to get into something that is a little bit more technical. And again, I don't know if on one is the best program for you to use to do this. However, if you're in a pinch and you're like, you know what? I want to do this. I got to do it. I'm going to show you. Uh, so we are going to add a poster to a wall, all right? So as you can see, there's already a frame on the wall. Um, two things I want you to notice. One, we're shooting pretty much perpendicular to the wall, straight on to the wall, all right? Uh, you're not at an angle. I'm going to show you the angle piece a little bit later. We know that we're uh, pretty straight on because... We have straight lines in the image and nothing looks too uh, like canted, if you will. So I want to replace this particular image or this photo painting, whatever. I want to replace that with our dirt biker. All right. So I'm going to hit the plus icon. I'm going to go and find our dirt bike. Uh, and you know what? We'll even use our dirt biker uh, that we just created because maybe... You know, this could happen. Oh, sorry. Uh, you create an image and you're like, now I need to put that image inside of the final image. Now, what I should have done, uh, sorry, I didn't think about this down because it's trying to load an on one photo uh, file into this particular uh, image. Yeah, perspective, the perspective that we're looking at. Thank you. All right. So moral of the story, this is going to load in all of those layers. Now, I don't need all of those layers. So what I'm going to do is turn this one off here. And I'm going to click Merge Visible. OK. And what this is, whenever you hit Merge Visible, uh, and I guess this is a good point to bring up. If you are working in a on photo file, 
and you want to have access to all of those layers when you are compositing into another file, you can just click an on photo file and you'll have it. Uh, but I wanted to keep this simple because uh, we're saying that this is the final image. I got what I wanted to out of this image and it worked the way that I wanted it to work. All right. Even though it does look a little weird, but just food for thought. All right. Now I'm going to turn back on my base layer because you have to make sure to turn off the layers that you don't want to merge into this, this other layer. Uh, and what I'm going to do is use, instead of clicking the transform or hitting the V key on the keyboard, I'm going to scroll down underneath the develop tab and we're going to go to the transform module. Now, uh, this doesn't get as much recognition as it probably should. Uh, and I guess I am going to have to use the transform module because it's not going to let me, uh, scale this down to the size that I need it to be for, oh, well, that's no fun. Let's just go ahead and drag this in. Why do you not want to do what I need you to do? Okay, so for the sake of today's tutorial, I am going to remove this, delete that layer, and I'm just going to add in the JPEG version uh, because I did not prep that very well. And I got a, a very weird outcome that is going to defeat the purpose. So we'll just go ahead and scale this one down because our goal right now is to make this the same size as this all right and i'm just going to click and drag and get it as close as i can i'm going to bring the opacity down on the layer just to see where i am missing because this is not going to be perfectly proportionate since that's just the way it is but I am going to bring it as close as I can to a corner and then I'm going to turn on transform. All right. And I'm going to use the keystone tool. The keystone tool allows you to grab these little dots and put them into uh, the corner of something that you may want the image to uh, append to or warp to. All right. Now, sorry that these are moving so slow. It's not my intent, but it's moving as fast as it can keep up and probably did not do the best job. But now this image should be in a fairly similar aspect uh, to the wall or the the image on the wall that was on the wall that we're covering up I'm just trying to move it inside of the borders uh, that's you know that's what I'm trying to do it's not gonna be perfect here so I'll hover over looks like I need to rotate this a little bit and then rotate it just a bit more and then pull it down, maybe. Yes, there. I, I try to come up with a, a plan B. Always try to have a backup plan uh, because one thing about uh, photo editing is the things you expect to happen usually don't happen. Um, so this is where you kind of start messing around and making the photo make sense uh, to the wall, right? So I'm doing a little bit of shifting here. Um, and I guess I could put a grid. It's not going to, that's not going to help us any. So 
this is just moving it up and down but that's still not helping because I've already made my window um, let's see let's scale it inside of there so this is scaling the image internal to the the uh, keystone that we made or that I that I put in there um, and then this is only rotating the image itself, right? Uh, internal to the little window. So I still need to maybe zoom in a little bit. Sometimes uh, it helps to be zoomed in, right? So you can get exactly what you need to. Um, and again, for, for the sake of time, I'm not going to make this entirely perfect. Uh, it's really just to show you the concept that it can be done. I personally think that it should be done in a, a different photo editor, but because you're always going to be doing this back and forth thing. And now for some reason, it doesn't want to show me my my bounding boxes. Give me my boxes. Doesn't want to play anymore. That's annoying. Okay. Well, you get the point, right? You can put stuff onto the wall. Now, there on the original image here, uh, there's like this little highlight. Well, now it wants to, I don't know what's going on. Sometimes on one just it does its own thing, right? Uh, there's this this highlight that's on the wall. Uh, what you might be able to do is use a blend mode. Let's see if we can get that highlight to shine through, which I don't think we will. Uh, no. Okay. So we're not even going to worry about it. Instead, uh oh, go to normal. Go to normal. There we go. And we're going to go to local. And this is only if you have to make the light match with what was on the original image. Uh, I don't think we have to for this particular uh, item, but we're just going to go ahead and add in a little bit. Yeah, the transform module, you know, there's a lot of modules inside of On One uh, that. People, you know, we just don't know exists because it's not something that you need on a regular basis. But uh, I came from a graphic design background a little bit, somewhat, I don't know. And so that was something that I was interested in. Um, so now what we're going to do is add that highlight, right? Uh, the cool thing is, and I'm in the local tab. Sorry, didn't say where I was going. I'm in the local tab. Uh and I can either just click one time, add in some uh, exposure, and that's adding in a highlight very subtly on a low opacity. Uh, I don't even think the in, in the live stream you may not be able to see it, but if you needed to do it, you could do it that way. Uh, or you can add an adjustment and you can go paint with color. I would grab the... Uh, picker tool and probably pick something that has the same highlight color that you need, which I don't know why that happened. Okay, there we go. So like something over here like that. Okay. Uh, and then you can use the brush or you can use the vignette tool will go uh, center, click. Nope, I needed edges. Uh, or you can use a gradient, but we'll go with edges. And we're making this, by the way, we're on the layer where uh, the image is, all right? And then you just make it smaller. Or as big as it needs to be, I should say. 
which on this one I need to be smaller, blend it out. So now I have somewhat of a highlight and then you just bring the opacity down so uh, it blends a little bit better with the image. Um, and it matches the color uh, structure that's inside of your image. And there you have adding a poster to a wall that's straight. Now we're going to hit done on this. It's going to save the on one photo. Uh, so while it saves, if you have any questions about any of the compositing techniques that I've covered so far, uh, please drop it in the comment section. Okay, so the next example is going to be a little bit different because the wall is actually uh, at a different perspective than what we were just working on. Um, and, you know, you may say, well, I don't even like the painting that's on the wall. I'm going to show you the... <laughs> the uh the clone stamp tool now i'll, I'll use the mat uh, i won't use the magic eraser the magic eraser is a very very destructive way of working um and so is clone stamping but clone stamping i won't say it's a little better but uh nonetheless we're going to get rid of this picture and put our dirt biker up here on the wall because uh our dirt bike photo um here let's do this let's go ahead and add our dirt bike photo and i'm going to show you how to scale it uh to the wall um and you know this photo might even be cooler but this makes more sense because this is a landscape image for the base and then we have a portrait uh style image that we're trying to incorporate with it. So we're just going to go ahead and lower the opacity so that way we can see what's happening underneath. And I'm going to move a little bit quick here because I think many of us have already, uh, like you, you understand what I'm doing. So I'm just going to scale this image down. And then I am going to move it over to our area. And then I'm going to turn on the transform. We're going to keystone this bad boy into the corners of this particular image. And this time I'm not going to go entirely perfect because I do have an experiment that I want to uh, kind of just troubleshoot with you guys and see if it, if it works. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work no idea whatsoever and it sounds like my neighbor is vacuuming their car so if you can hear that just let me know and i'll shut the window uh, i need the window to be open so it doesn't get so hot in here all right we'll go ahead and apply that keystone well that's weird why did I do that no you were supposed to go the opposite direction. Um, I am scaling down. Let me go ahead and undo this keystoning because that did not work the way it was supposed to. Um, the way that I'm scaling down is I'm in the... Let me turn off transform here so that way it's not as confusing. Uh, and bring up the opacity. And by clicking the transform in the left tool wheel, you get a few options at the top of your screen. Uh, one of those options is scale, and then you just click and drag, and it will scale the image. Now, for some reason, this doesn't want to scale anymore. Not, I don't know what's going on. Why it is... Okay. You don't want to... It doesn't want to play anymore. But that, that is how you scale your images. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. And why it's 
being weird. Because, yeah. Huh. Okay. I, I don't know why it's not scaling anymore. Just the the, the challenges of, of doing something like this inside of On1. Uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So now we need to figure out why that didn't want to let us warp the image. Uh, so we will try and do this manually. Okay, so it needs to be something like this. And then I'll make it smaller by dragging that in, fitting the frame a little bit better. And this is a very, very uh, rigid way of getting this to fit the frame, right? Um, the, the goal in today's live stream is just to show you that there are some tools available uh may not be the best way of doing it though all right so we're just going to say that maybe this is and we'll see if nah, we'll tighten the aspect ratio just to make this a little bit more appropriate And once we have that, we're just going to say that that's, uh, that's good to go. I'm going to bring my opacity back up, hit the V key. And to get rid of these, uh, or actually, I need to bring the opacity back down. To get rid of those black lines, we're going to hit the B key to bring up our brush, uh, our masking brush. Now, one of the ways that you can do this, hit Shift X, bring up the opacity, and then you just brush away all of those areas that you no longer need in your photo, right? This is a way of masking out all of that. Now, I am personally not going to do this because if you have Photo Raw 2022, you have access to the line mask tool, all right? So I'm just going to click and make my selection. Very rough selection. You you'll definitely want to take some time to get the selection the way that you would like it to be. But we'll say that, uh oh, I want to end my selection. There we go. And so the paint bucket Wherever you click, it's going to remove that area from your photo. So I'm going to click the top here. So it removes that area from my photo and leaves me with just my dirt biker uh, on the inside. And then when you're done, you hit done. I guess, excuse me, um, I should have covered that you can add a feather in and uh choose the opacity of how much that stuff goes away. Um, and you can also choose if you want to paint in or paint out. Uh, I typically do the paint out, but that's just me. All right, hit done. And now I can bring my opacity up. And if all went well, I now have a dirt biker positioned uh, right here over this bed. Um, and then, you know, I can move. Uh oh, you go back to where you're supposed to be. I think this is the one. No, nope. we're just all over the place right now. But you get the point. I'm not going to belabor this too much more. Um, 
this is how you can uh, get the image to lay over and, you know, will someone notice? Maybe, but for on one, I think that that's pretty good. Uh, now, if you were curious as to how do you get rid of a big painting like so, well, I'm just going to go ahead and sample the wall over here. Hit the bracket key, make this really, really big. And why is it giving me a black brush? What am I missing? Okay, I'm going to just paint over this. It should copy the wall. Oh, <laughs> that's why. I was like, why is it giving me a black brush? All right, I wasn't on the photo that I wanted to actually remove the painting from. All right, you have to be on the photo that you want to remove the painting from. I was actually on my dirt bike layer. No good. So now, if I select an, a sample, I'll get a preview of what that sample is going to look like. So I can just come across here. And if you see the little uh, crosshair over on the left, it's, sam it's showing you where it's sampling from. All right. Now, I'm doing this very uh, roughly, but that's okay. Because the goal right now is just to get rid of as much of the painting as I can. Oh, and try not to go too far. Right, you're gonna have to resample uh, from time to time, so you don't get lines. You definitely don't want lines in the middle of your sampled area. Uh, the goal right now is just to get rid of the painting. Come back over here. And this, this is one of those things that I think maybe just because I'm more familiar with using uh, graphic design software, it's just a little bit easier. Maybe we'll sample from over here. All right. So now that I have that particular piece removed, uh, what I can do is use the healing brush, right, and just paint over it and let the healing brush really solve a lot of these issues. You do it in, in chunks, um, and these may be, that's probably too large of a chunk, but as you paint over it it blends it in a lot better uh, the clone stamp is just to copy the pixels from one area to the other and then you come up behind it and you do a little bit of healing um, again not the program I would recommend anyone doing something like this in but it can be done uh, as you can see, and now that photo is gone. And then if I were to turn on our dirt bike photo, it now sits over the wall. And if there was a frame of some sort that it could sit in, then it would have a place to show up. Now there is a frame issue, but that's just technicality. This little hairline uh, that's coming from the mask that didn't fully get removed. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to go in and edit your masks to get rid of that stuff. But, okay. So now on to our final example. Don't need to save that. And that is going to be, uh, we're going to try and make a, a, just a really quick Christmas card. Okay. Going to hit new canvas. Oh, sorry. So 
uh, what I'm going to do is create a, a blank canvas and I need a place to actually save that. That's what that was telling me. So I actually have a folder that I created in order for me to actually save these things. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, that is probably the best way that I have learned to uh, clean up my clone stamps when there is like repetitive stuff, uh, it, at least an on one. Now, again, I go back to my disclaimer. I would not use on one to do heavy lifting of cloning um, on one. I don't believe it was designed for that. I think it's a tool that they threw in there and it just kind of it, it works, but not the thing that I would recommend to anyone to, to do unless you're like extremely in a pinch. But um, you have to be in a folder. I was working out of an album. You can't save to an album when you're creating a new canvas. Uh, so I'm going to label this Christmas card. And I like to work in pixels. You can work in whatever dimensions you like to. Uh, and I'm going to make a square Christmas card. And I like to go a good 3,000 by 3,000. That's just my preference. All right. And we're just going to hit OK. This is going to bring us a blank canvas to work off of. There's literally nothing here. We have to build up all of whatever we're going to do. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my background. And I am probably uh you know what let me use some some actual design skills here i'm going to bring in this tree okay and i'm going to sample some colors from the tree so that way i have uh, a good understanding so what color do i want we'll go with like one of these like lighter shades of green that are on the tree all right this is just going to help with some color harmony. So how do I get that? Well, I'm going to go over to local. Again, paint with color. Click on the eyedropper tool. And really, I, I'll just put it into my swatches. So click the eyedropper tool in my swatch. Find a green that's in the photo. So right there, that seems about good. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new, uh, uh oh, didn't save my color, save my green in the swatches. Got to click and drag it into the swatches. All right. Now that it's in the swatches, I can go to create a fill layer and I'm going to fill this layer with that green color. This is going to be the back of my Christmas card. So I'll click, drag that underneath. And we will call this background. Just call it BG for short. Uh, so now it's time for me to start to build up all of the elements that I want on my background, which the first one, I do want this Christmas tree. Uh, I just don't want the background that the Christmas tree is on. And I'm actually kind of okay with the crop of this Christmas tree as it is right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just hit mask and uh, I'm going to paint away because I don't need this to be entirely perfect. I just need this to be good enough. Uh, make sure that I'm painting on the mask of my card and then I'm going to paint away this background. All right. So very simply just getting rid of the background. And again, I can go into the tree a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and maybe the tree is taking up too much space. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure yet because uh, I have an idea in my head of what I want the Christmas card to look like. But I think the tree is is taking up too much of the space. So I may have to tailor the way that I uh, address this. So 
once I have, yeah, and you know what? I'll just paint away some more of the tree. And I like organic shapes whenever I do my brushing, right? Uh, so it doesn't have to be a perfect line for me. You do whatever works for you. So now that I have this nice looking uh, transition, uh, the next thing that I probably want to do is bring down my opacity and I'll bring it down probably about 60%, all right? And I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. And this time, all I'm gonna do is work in this area that the transition starts to happen, right? Because I want the, uh, I wanna make a natural looking gradient transition into this tree, which is why I'm using a lighter opacity. It's just gonna help with the uh, transition. And then I'm gonna do another pass at a lower opacity, probably about 40 now. And in the same type of area where that transition happens, I'm gonna start my transition again, all right? So very slowly I'm getting this, uh, this transition into the Christmas tree. Uh, and then I'll even go one more time at about 20%. Same thing, click, drag. And you could absolutely do this with a masking bug if that's what you want to use. Uh, and then the last thing that I wanna do is come down to about maybe 10% this time. Make a large brush. I guess that's as big as I'm going to get. And I'm going to start from the corner here and just drag up to paint it in over the rest of the image. All right. Uh, and maybe that's not enough. I really want the, the tree to kind of go into this green, uh, I don't know, not a background, but... I want to have like a green overlay look almost to it. All right. So now that I have my, my tree there, uh, and again, I think it's taken up too much space, but it is what it is. Uh, the next thing that I'll do is add in, uh, hmm. We will, we'll add in another color layer. This time we'll make it white. Let's see if this works. And then we are going to go. And this is where it gets a little wonky uh, because I want to add in weather. And it may not work the way that I want. Or you know what? I'm going to just change the background color. So if you double click. I think it's double click. No, right click. One of these allows you edit fill color. So right click on the layer, click edit fill color. I want this to be a all black layer. There we go. All right, so now that we have this all black layer uh, and I want to add in like a snow effect, right? Uh, this one is blizzard. Let me see if we have, I'll go with accumulation and then I'm going to click add again. This time we're going to add a curves adjustment layer. Uh, and I really just want the, there we go. I'm trying to get the black to be as black as I can get it. Uh, so that way the, the white really stands out. So just going to click and drag this. There we go. Now we have one of the layers that I showed earlier, right? So I can come over here, click on my blend mode and hit lighten and look at that. Now I have, so this did work finally, something random that I, uh, <laughs> that I'm trying, it finally worked. So uh, cheers to that. So now you can go back to weather, 
Uh, and you can change this to whatever you want, right? The goal was I wanted to get this, this snow looking thing. Um, and I don't really care for any of that. Blizzard is too much, I think. Alpine accumulation. And if you have an image of snow, then you can absolutely uh, do that. Um, and then I'll even come over to... I'm going to add in a tone enhancer and bring this to the top of the curves layer and let's see do bringing out highlights do anything don't think so but brightening yeah so you can just brighten this up and it really brings out uh, that snow all right and then you can obviously just bring down the opacity of this layer to your liking, whatever works for you. And now you have snow on the layer. Uh, so let's go ahead and create another fill layer. This time I do want a white layer again. And I am going to click on my mask, get my masking bug. I want to go linear top, so that way the effect is only here on the bottom. I'm going to click, and what I'm trying to do is make like this snow looking thing here at the bottom of the image, because this is where my text would go, all right? This is where I would put my text, like, and you could make this whatever color you want right uh, I just want to fade it in as well as I can you can make this again whatever color you want so we'll say that that is the the bottom portion because this is where my text is going right um, and then let's see the next thing that you may want to do is because this is where I'm thinking of putting the photo, all right? The photo is going to go in this area. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab a photo. Let's hit the plus icon. And um, hmm. Here, let me hit done real quick. Let me go pull an image and then we'll come back to this. So if you got questions, now's the time to ask any of those. And if not, that's fine. Uh, you can also leave comments and uh, suggestions I am good with all of those as well. So let's see here. Um, in here okay so we'll just go with this photo of my daughter how about that uh, let's just copy that and then Paste it right in here. So that way we get a copy of that image and uh, we'll work. That's one of the cool things about Alma Photo Raw. The, you have access to your hard drive. 
while you are uh, working. So we're going to click there, click here, layers. It's going to open the on photo and throw that photo right on top for us. So we don't have to uh, go searching for it. Give us a little bit of, oh, look at that smile. Photo's a little blurry. Um, looks like this is in focus and <laughs> that's out of focus, but it's okay. What we are doing today, this is perfectly fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is click on the mask icon and I'm going to make a very simple cutout. Whatever you use to cut your image out, do you. All right. I'm going to invert that just to keep it really, really easy. Make this smaller and get it more focused on her. And then I don't want it to feather as much. All right. I think that is fine. So this could be, you know, your image, however you want to do that. Hit the V key. We're going to scale this down just a little bit because I don't need it to be so large, right? And I want it to be proportionate to the uh, the image and, and the space that I'm working in. So here, uh, and then probably scale it up a little bit. Just a little bit more. And then I can go back to the mask and really start to tailor that. So if I wanted it to be a little bit longer in this area, I can do that. And then maybe even feather it out with my computer. Yeah, there we go. It's going to let me do that. So we can feather it out. And now I have my image here. Probably needs to be pulled over a little bit more. This is, again, I'm making a design on the fly. I did not plan this entirely, uh, but I know that uh, some people asked for the Christmas card, and I wanted to make sure that I show you an option, right? Uh, then the last thing that you can do is come down here and add text. Okay. And you can change this to whatever makes sense for, for you. I'm going to click there, change this from white to black because this is definitely not going to work over my white overlay. If I don't, and then we'll click and drag to the location in which we want the text. So one thing that I don't like about on one and the way that you deal with text in on one is their bounding boxes. Like, I don't know why they think it's a good idea to have such a large box for one line of text. Like that doesn't make sense. I feel like it should append to the characters uh, that you type and then you just work from there, right? Uh, and then as you scale the, the size of the words up, right? So if I go really, really big here, you see how it starts to cut out the words. I'm not a fan of that. I feel like that's just oversight. Hopefully they'll fix that. Uh, but again, I don't know how much this was actually designed to even do text. Feels like text was kind of an afterthought. Like, uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'll try orange from the tree. Let's try that. Click here, get the picker tool, and we'll go with maybe this orange. Let's see what happens with the text. 
guess it didn't want to maybe try this orange like right there yeah no good good uh good suggestion yeah and again the this was not a uh very well or i mean i had the idea in my head uh which typically is what happens right it's like okay i want to do something like this how can i do it uh with using the the programs that i have access to and this is you know kind of where where you can get with it but you can make whatever you want the the goal here was really just to show uh, that you can composite add multiple images and layers um, and you know this particular image is fully editable with all of the other things that I have access to right um, so I can throw some structure in there wouldn't do that but I could uh, this photo I missed focus but the expression is very very much in focus right uh, the the joy of like she I don't know for me maybe everyone is different but uh, photos tell stories to me and this was a Christmas morning where our kids were unwrapping stuff she had already unwrapped a good amount of gifts which you can see the uh, the wrapping paper in the background and she still had the thrill of look there's something else um, you know so for me the moment was really just capturing her excitement um, and she was also missing uh, a tooth so you can see her two front teeth you know it, it's like that that whole phrase all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth but for her she was missing actually I think it was only one tooth on uh, the left side over here I think it was this tooth but you know, it's those types of memories. Thanks, Jer. I appreciate that. You know, I want to be as helpful as I possibly can. Um, but I also want to be a good steward of your time. And let's go ahead and hit done there. And then... Whoa. come back to our slides for a second so yeah I mean that brings us to the question segment of the slides uh, and you know hopefully there was some good information the the key takeaways really is that there's about three main ways that you can edit your photos or composite photos inside of on one photo raw the first one is using layers the second one is using blend modes and then the last one is using uh, the masking tool really but you can crop images uh, if you absolutely want it to um, into your photos now the problem is uh, cropping an individual image does not work as well um, inside of on one photo raw i don't think it was really designed for again the things that we were doing so in order to really cut out something you're going to have to use the mask uh, but it's essentially cropping on on one is what i'm sorry I, I missed the context of that i i think you're going to say on one is amazing which i agree on one is amazing um Oh, on one has exceptional masking options. Yeah, you know, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be as fair as I can to on one. Uh, they do have really good masking options. However, for compositing, the masks are not nearly as good. Uh, the selection tools really is where on one struggles all right uh, the line mask tool is great they're they're getting better and from what i understand it used to be in older versions and then they just brought it back so you know 
I don't work for the company. Uh, I just, I'm a consumer of the software and I am an affiliate for them, but it seems as though they need to continue working on their selection tools. The AI select doesn't work as well. When you go into the refine module and you start, start to like chisel away, it doesn't do like compared to affinity photo and Photoshop, when you go to refine your mask and you're actually refining the mask and uh, the software is able to make a better selection. Um, we need something more like that in on one. But then again, maybe we don't, right? Uh, maybe that's just where those programs shine and on one won't be there. Uh, that That's okay, I guess. I don't know. Uh, your comments and, and thoughts on that would be uh, welcomed. Uh, because what I say isn't like the end all be all, please, if it ever feels that way, uh, say so, because that's not, that's not the, uh, yeah. But with that being said, the, um, what was I going to say? Uh, the masking tools that are available are very unique inside of a raw editor that you won't get in other raw editors. Uh, with the exception of Luminar, I guess they have mask in there, but uh, if you were to compare, you know, the masking capabilities in Luminar versus the masking flexibility in On1, I would say On1 is superior. But if I were to compare the masking capabilities of On1 to Photoshop or Affinity Photo, uh, no, I, I would have to say that those programs, they can mask a lot more precise uh, because the tools that they give you uh, with on one, I'm sorry, with Photoshop, particularly uh, the different tools that are available to make selections in Photoshop is just amazing. Um, you know, and I don't use Photoshop anymore, but when I was using it, it was amazing. Uh, and Affinity Photo has some great tools too, but I still think Photoshop is the superior selection making software. Uh, and just the, and you know, this may be where my familiarity is the transform of a particular se uh, selection. I'm still trying to figure out some stuff in Affinity Photo that I was able to just, you know, use keyboard shortcuts and make that stuff happen in Photoshop. Uh, I, I know that it can be done in affinity, but just what that workaround is, I have to figure out. So I'm going through a lot of training and watching videos and, uh, trial and error, but, uh, yeah, on one masking is meant, uh, more for landscaping. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> refining a mask will drive you crazy. Uh, you know. I haven't had too many issues with refining the mask that I make. Uh, and if you were to watch the last week's live stream, the, uh, the, whatever this is, the body wash, uh, photo that I made all of the editing and the compositing and, uh, selections and all of that I made inside of affinity photo. Now, if we're saying like, uh, refining hair, Yes. Or trees. Uh, yes, there are probably going to be some challenges involved with that. Uh, because I think that those are challenges everywhere. Um, and here in on one, you get some options and I'm thankful for the options. I'm, I'm not saying like, oh man, uh, these should have never been in there. I actually enjoy that they're available. But at the same time, you know, just wanted to be very uh, fair that these are not, as you said, Jared, they're not designed for advanced selections, right? Or specific selections. It's designed for landscape, which to me is a little one-sided. Uh, the tools should be a little bit more universal 
and a little bit more uh, apparent as to what we use them for or when we want to use them and, and that they can be used for that. Uh, now, I am a asymmetrical thinker. Uh, I always try to find a way to use a thing the way that it could be used, but maybe wasn't intended to be used that way. Uh, hence the lesson that we just went through of compositing inside of on one. Um, there are features available, but I would not use on one as my primary compositing tool. Right. Uh, and, and again, back to the, the point that Jared just made compositing and on one is probably also centered around landscape photography. Uh, you know, there's some features in, in on one that are for portraits, uh, stuff like that, but I'm not sure if on one is fully, uh, vetted in getting, uh, more than just landscape involved. I know that they're going to say something different than that. Uh, yeah, Olivio, uh, yeah. So the, um, the overlays that I was using, they came from a free pack from him. Uh, the overlay that we put behind the dirt biker, those all came from a free pack from Olivio. So yeah, nah, he's, he's great. I've been watching a lot of his videos and that's where I've been learning a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, how affinity photo does something that I would have normally done in Photoshop. The thing is some of the terminology is different. So it's finding what the term in Photoshop is, uh, and, or finding what the term in affinity photo is that I'm used to in Photoshop. And, uh, that's where, you know, it's like, okay, what, what do I call it? So I know what to look for, uh, because, I do read user manuals. I'm one of those guys, all right? Um, which is why I learned so much about a software is I read the user manual. I go find out what the company wanted you to know about the software uh, and hopefully present it to you guys in an easy way to digest and, and, you know, really get you going on your photography journey and, and moving in that direction. Um, it doesn't always work out, I don't think, uh, or I can imagine it doesn't always work out, but hopefully I, I'm, I'm getting uh, you guys a little bit of assistance. So it has been about two hours now, and I'm more than happy to you know keep hanging out uh, if there's questions or anything of the sort. But like I said, I want to be a good steward of, of everyone's time. So uh, if there aren't any questions, then I'll go ahead and cut the stream here. Uh, but if there are, you know, please drop them. Um, now, before I before I go, uh, I do want to mention I am working on the Free Will Photos website. All right. That is a work in progress between my normal day to day job uh, being a husband, being a father, um, there are a lot of things that I am competing with also building the website. Uh, believe it or not, I'm sure you guys would believe this. Uh, Free Will Photos is a one person show and I am that person. Um, so moral of the story, the, the website is getting built and here's the vision for the website. There's going to be a members form and there's going to be an opportunity to share work in there, uh, you know, and get feedback building that community. I don't use Facebook uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people, some people use it, some people don't. Uh, I kind of stopped using it. I'd still have a Facebook page the for the uh, for free will photos and from time to time, I post like the videos to it, but it just never turned into the community that I was looking to build. Now on the website in the members area, which the the members area that I'm talking about right now is completely free. Uh, there will be a paid area 
for getting access to courses, which are also in the, the, the gauntlet of me working on. I'm working on some courses uh, that teach more in depth how on one photo raw works. Uh, so if that's something you're interested, just stay tuned. Um, but the goal of the website is really just to give a central location to get the free presets, to get uh, any of the paid presets in the future. Um, get some overlays like I'm going to be creating uh, a lot of materials and assets, uh, books, courses, all that stuff, combining all of that into one area, uh, because right now it's kind of split between a few different places, right? I have the Google Drive. Uh, when you sign up for the email list, then you get another email with some presets. Um, what I'm trying to do is get it all into one location. So it's a little bit easier for me to manage and, uh, you know, kind of keep under control. Uh, and then the, the last thing that I want to share with you guys is I'm going to drive towards changing my upload schedule, uh, which there will be two videos during the week and then a live stream or a video on Saturday. Now, the live stream, which you guys are in right now, uh, or you're watching on the replay, absolutely, uh, I want to do this as much as possible. I enjoy the live stream. I enjoy talking with you, uh, answering questions, and, and just hanging out. However, there's going to be days when I don't have the ability to live stream, so then that's when the videos will be posted uh, with the same context or content just in a video format. Uh, so here's how the posting schedule is going to go. On Tuesdays, there's going to be the uh, whatever that lesson of the week is or whatever the item of the week is, that's going to be on Tuesday. On Thursday, we're going to go with a video podcast of some sort. Um, and I'm going to work on getting some visual cues in there and things like that. Uh, but really just talking about photography, all right? And then on Saturday, that's when we're going to go a little bit deeper into On One and do some stuff that's a little bit more uh, creative, fun, uh, energetic, things like that. Um, and then there will be some videos sprinkled all throughout, you know, uh, the week if I have the ability to do that. But the goal is to get two videos and a live stream every week. Now, I'll be honest, I can't promise that I'm going to always deliver two videos and a live stream every week. Uh, but that is the goal. So Tuesday, there will be a video that comes out uh, teaching something or just talking about something. Uh, then on Thursday, we will have the video podcast. So you'll have the information of understanding what uh, you know, just sharing my thoughts on photography in general, because uh, I think it's important to talk about those things. Um, and then I want to hear your guys' thoughts on photography. If you are interested in being a guest on the show and interviewing, uh, just let me know. Send me an email. Say, hey, I want to be a guest on the show. Uh, here's what I want to talk about. And we will schedule a time to record it and, and get that out there. Uh you know, the, the goal is to build a, uh, community centered around photography. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate or a professional getting paid, uh, for, for it, or if you're just doing it to have fun, doesn't matter. All right. The goal is just to talk about photography and have a place to embrace everyone else's, uh, philosophy behind it because, not everyone will agree with my philosophy. Some people have different philosophies and that's fine, right? It's your art. It's whatever you want to create. Uh, share it with us. Maybe we'll try it out and, you know, enjoy it. So that's the goal behind the video podcast. And then uh, culminating event is on Saturdays with the live stream where we can talk about whatever happened throughout the week. Uh, and I'm going to have like different segments for the live stream. 
So there will be the on one segment, maybe even some news uh, in the photography world that is just interesting to talk about. Um, and then wrapping it up with answering any of your questions. Uh, I will be asking for feedback throughout the week, uh, asking questions to get answers and see, you know, where you guys uh, or what your thoughts are. So hopefully that was all good and uh, nothing too crazy. So thank you for everyone that came to the live stream and uh, a special thank you to Jer for uh, just, you know, keeping the comment section live. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to, you know, just keep producing content. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.